Welcome everyone to the closing meeting of Wildflower Week. It's, I think it's been a really successful event. I'm really excited with how it turned out. Uh, we had 16 different virtual hikes, field trips um, available to everybody. And so thank you to all of our partners who submitted videos. Um, many of the videos had over 50 views, so people were definitely out there watching them. Um, and perhaps some of you were able to go out and follow in some of their footsteps to see some of the places and flowers that were highlighted in the videos. Um, one of the big events for the week was a botanical drawing class hosted by a former KMPS board member, Amy Tipton. There were 23 participants um, and I personally really enjoyed it. I learned a lot about drawing uh, with, with uh, using pencil. I drew a phlox myself. <laughs> and then um, another event was a wildflower trivia night hosted by the Arboretum and ours truly, Emily Ellingson. And there were 37 participants for a really fun night of Trixie botanical questions. And um, my, my favorite team name of the night was the Smarty Plants. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I just wanted to thank all of the partners. So everyone who contributed to the event, um, these are all different organizations who either um, submitted a video or did one of the events or um, like Shaker Village submitted a scavenger hunt, things like that. And then a very special thank you to Jeff Nelson, who was great. Um, put the website together as well as did all of the da daily updates. Um, Kendall McDonald, who is a botanist and lichenologist with Kentucky Nature Pres Preserves, who put together eight of the videos that were posted for the week. Um, all of the ones that had uh, the, the KNPS intro um, were the ones that Kendall put together. And then Vanessa, uh, who is our INAT guru, guru. And if you look down on this list, she has gone through over 900 plants and identified them for you all. So thank you so much, Vanessa. And then last but not least, all of our members for participating in this week's event. So our centerpiece for the week was the statewide botany blitz. Um, and just in case you don't know yet. <laughs> the Botany Blitz is a community science event focused on finding as many plant species as possible in a select area for a select period of time. And so the focus of our Botany Blitz was on spring ephemerals. And we had observations from 63 counties, which I think is amazing because it's over half of Kentucky's counties. We have 120 counties in the state. And they ranged all the way from Calisle County in the far west, all the way to Pike County in the far east. So it was a really great distribution of the whole state. Um, and in the project itself, we had 166 people signed up to partake in it. Um, as of about 15 minutes ago, there was 2,875 observations, which is crazy. I was not expecting that. I was thinking maybe somewhere around like several hundred. <laughs> so this is really awesome. Um, over 450 species were found. And then in terms of people identifying it, we had over 125 people helping out to make sure all of these species got identified. So thank you for all those people. And currently our leaders our um, penguin paladin for most observations and John Abrams for most species. So well done job. And then um, in terms of most commonly observed species, we had 58 observations of Phlox divericata um, as well as dwarf larkspur. Those were the two big winners for the week. And then um, viola sororia, sororia or common blue violet came in second or third or however you want to count that. And then May Apple, Spring Beauty, Ruin Enemy, Selenine Poppy, all of the rest of these you can see had a lot of observations. Continuing on, um, you can see two invasives made the list, <laughs> two spring common invasives, but the rest are 
beautiful non, uh, native ephemeral species. And then we are, we have decided to hold off on announcing the winners um, purely because the botany blitz is still going through the end of today. And there are a lot of observations that we still need to identify. So we are going to hold off on announcing winners and then we will make the announcement in the next edition of the Lady Slipper. And we will give out prizes for the top three people in the categories of most observations and most species. Um, and so this gives everybody more time to upload photos if you haven't yet. Um, and because data is stored in each digital photo that you take, um, anything you observe from this week and you post later on will still become part of the project um, as it's it's stored within that digital image. Um, and one thing that would be really helpful is if uh, you get on iNaturalist and help us sort through all these observations and help ID them all. That would be really helpful. So um, I'm gonna hand it off to Vanessa, who's gonna give us some highlights on some really cool species that were observed this week. Okay, well, this was uh, such a cool week. Um, we saw, so many observations. Um, we were really impressed with how many people got out, joined the project, and were observing plants this week. Um, so we just wanted to go over a few of the coolest photos or species that we saw coming through. Um, so this week, uh, OKNP's uh, surveys were focused on bronze rock crust, which is a little mustard um, that is globally rare and is mostly found within three counties in Kentucky, Franklin, Owen, and Henry counties. Um, so we've been surveying for this plant this week and enjoying the beautiful weather. And here we've got two photos by OKNP's own Jess Slade and Tara Littlefield. Um, from Jeff Nelson and Robert Dunlap in McCracken County, uh, we've got this gorgeous blooming Carolina Silverbell. It's got these beautiful pendulous white flowers. Uh, Jeff and Robert are like our, our power observers in Western Kentucky. So mm -hmm. we always like to see what they've got in their sights. Um, in Warren County, uh, a French's shooting star from Kentucky Courtney. Uh, this is a really cool shooting star similar to uh, the usual species that we see in Kentucky, Dodecatheon medii. Um, so this is great to see in Warren County. Um, and like all the photos of these mass blooms were so awesome to see. Um, Blue-eyed Mary may still be at peak bloom at Raven Run Nature Sanctuary um, south of Lexington. So if you're in the area, you should definitely go check this out because these are just gorgeous. Um, Cindy Campbell saw this gorgeous uh, roadside grassland remnant, um, huge amount of bird's foot violet. This is just so cool to see. Again, from Jess Slade, um, this mass bloom of Virginia bluebells in Franklin County. And then wild hyacinth at Cherokee Park in Louisville. So if you're in the Louisville area, um, this might be one to check out because they won't be there for long. This is definitely a spring ephemeral. So when it is done for the year um, in early summer, it, um, it goes dormant and it disappears until next year. This is not a native plant, but I this little bumblebee that was coming in for landing was just so cute. And so I thought I'd put this in the slide. Um, what, this is a great capture. This is wild ginger flower. It, flowers at the base of the plant. And so sometimes it's a little hard to see, but if you can, usually you have to get down on your hands and knees or um, kind of crawl around to find them. But if you can get down there and you can check it out, these flowers are just incredible. They're so hairy and they're so unique looking. Um, this is a little bit unique in that it's a three-parted flower um, in a dicot species. So that is a bit uncommon for plants, usually 
die cuts are four or five parted. And this is one of those rare cases where a die cut is, has a three parted flower. Um, John Abrams took this awesome photo of two leaf miterwort. This is one of the hardest flowers to photograph because the stems are so slender and these flowers are so tiny, but they look like beautiful little snowflakes. Um, and this is a, a great photograph from John. This is um, common blue violet and bluets. Just a really pretty photograph. There were so many of these beautiful, beautiful compositions. And then here's just a collage of a bunch of other gorgeous flowers that you guys photographed. Um, there's so much more than this. So if you have time, definitely take some time to scroll through um, because it's, it's just so nice to see all this color after that long winter. Thank you, Vanessa. And um, I'm going to hand it off to Tara Littlefield now to close out the meeting. So I'm out here at, at uh, Pine Creek Barrens. I was running some errands and was doing a short pop in here. It's got really good cell phone service, which is awesome. Um, the Glade Crest, the Kentucky Glade Crest, which is a federally listed uh, plant, is going to seed. So I wanted to, to see that and then some violets because I'm trying to catch as many violets as I can this spring. But uh, uh, like, like Vanessa and Heidi said, this has been just such a great week. Um, you know, there's that silver lining in the pandemic where, you know, we can connect more and communicate more with members across the whole entire state virtually um, through INAT, through these virtual um, hikes. And so um, I know, uh, you know, a lot of people like to meet in person and, and we are certainly gonna be planning uh, some field trips, I think, later on in the year, possibly. Um, the board is going to be meeting in the next week to, to decide on exactly what our plans are. But um, I think that that these uh, these meetings and particularly these botany blitzes with INAT, we're going to continue to do those kinds of things into the future because uh, they really just connect everyone across the whole entire state. Not everyone can can make it to one place, uh, you know, for, for Wildflower Weekend. So, so I, I've been so, so uh, pleased and, and excited about the direction um, that we're going here. So very exciting. Some other things I'll just touch, touch base on briefly um, uh, with the Native Plant Society and, and, and different projects that we're working on this year. And, um, you know, we've got our grants program. Uh, our grants committee is, is uh, looking through the grants right now, but I think we've got one or two student grants that we'll probably be announcing um, in the next newsletter. Um, and uh, that, that, uh, that grant, um, the student grant uh, deadline has closed, but if you do know any students that are still looking for grants, um, I'm sure we can, can slide them in uh, and, re and review projects if you know anyone that, that is, uh, is looking for grants. In addition to those student grants, we also have native plant inventory grants that are open to anybody, the um, community scientists, not just students. So um, they're small grants that'll help you get to natural areas and, and catalog plants um, on INAT or you know in species lists. And and we've got folks that can that can uh, that can help and, and guide guide you through that process. So look, so look on our website for 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 those types of grant opportunities. So that that's something new that we're doing just to try to connect um, you know everyone to different natural areas and 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 uh, and and help with with species lists. So um, this fall we are definitely going to plan another uh, Kentucky Botanical Symposium like we did last year, and it will probably be online still. Um, we might have some. I think that was kind of late winter anyway, in winter. So, so that will probably um, end up still being on um, online, um, and that and that works because then we can reach a, a much larger audience that way. Uh, but uh, but if anyone on this call or um, you know just a call out to our members, um, reach out to us, get involved. Um, we need committee chair members. We need more people to help um, organize field trips and and uh, so many different things. We've got a lot of synergy going on with Native Plant Society right now. And, and I'm really excited. There's new people joining. Um, so I think we could do a lot of great things in the, in the next coming years. Um, just looking at, looking at plant diversity, conserving different areas. 
uh, learning about all these different cool uh, plants that we have across the state. So that's that's really about it. Um, we will uh, be meeting in the next uh, two or so weeks, the board will, uh, to decide and, and get some dates down and um, just check. We've got our monthly newsletter, the Lady Slipper. You can hear a car in the background here. Uh, there's, a, there's a road back there. Uh, but uh, yeah, check our, our, our newsletter that comes out monthly. So you'll hear once the board decides if we're going to be organizing any actual in-person field trips, um, you all will be the first to know if you're on our email list and, and the members. So um, that's, that's really it. I'm just, I'm just really excited about all this. Um, and uh, I really appreciate everyone joining and uh, looking forward to, to doing more and, and botanizing more with everybody, so.